offers a nationwide network of financial professionals. Call 1-800-290-7226 or email thequest at brokersalliance.com. And remember, when you need financial guidance, call Brokers Alliance. I'm your host, Steve Savon, and of course with me today and all this week is Ken Davis, Vice President of Advanced Marketing from Bell & Associates, and Ken and I are talking about all this week, taxes, taxes, taxes. You can email me at thequest at workersalliance.com or call 1-800-290-7226, and we'll take your questions via email. We'll make sure Ken gets them so that you can understand what we're talking about on this show. You know, when we got into this whole issue of taxes, and actually, I, I object, I again, I object to the phrase paying taxes when you're making contributions into Social Security. And it really bothers me that the language that some people are using, uh, how can Social Security be, and I'm a conservative, by the way, but how can Social Security be an entitlement program? I'm paying into it. I contributed. My employer contributed. If you're self-employed, you got hit twice. Right. So I don't understand that whole thinking behind why people keep registering it as an entitlement. Well, because they misunderstand how the tax really works. Is When this was set up, I don't remember how many people were supporting our elderly, but when it was set up as age 65 mm -hmm. for retirement, and a large number of people had passed away by that point in time, so there's a whole lot of people paying money into the system to pay for the old folks. It wasn't really money the, the older generation had put away at that point in time. It was really, it's a welfare type of a system. You're taking money from people that are working today and taking care of our elderly that needed it back then. And the numbers are very low uh, mm -hmm. compared to today. Well, the whole world has changed. People are living well into their 80s and 90s now. And the amount of people supporting our elderly are getting smaller and smaller. So you may, you know, think of a pyramid with one person supported by 10 or by 5 or by 3 or 2. Certainly as that base gets smaller and smaller, it becomes more and more cumbersome on the, on the people paying taxes now to support them. So this really isn't a retirement mm -hmm. like we most, most of us think. This is taxpayers taking care of our senior citizens that need some help. And, and now that's become an entitlement in people's minds. Well, I, I wonder what was going on in FDR's mind in 1937 when this concoction came up. I mean, think about this, and I did say this many times on the convention trail and in some of the articles I've written in some of our trade magazines. I said, look, I'm 50 years old, this is back a decade, and I said, if you let me out right now, today, you can have everything I've contributed, give it to somebody else, just let me put the match, my employer match and my contribution of 765, let me put it in my own and I'll put it in a, I'll even buy bonds. Sure. I'll even buy uh, money markets. I'll buy something conservative that I can't even lose in the market. And I'd be money ahead 10 years, right? That's I'd right. I'd have more than 30 years. You'd actually have real assets sitting on the sideline. And not only that, Steve, after you lived off those assets in your retirement, guess what? There might even be something left to give to your children that you care greatly about. Easily, in and, my view. And, and maybe if you, you were to pass away early, maybe have some parents that are dependent on you, or maybe have children that have some sort of uh, critical need mm -hmm. that they can't take care of themselves, they've got medical problems. You know, this money could be passed on to the next generation. But uh, when you die with Social Security, that money goes away. Well, I'm telling you, just like you said earlier, the Social Security system was built on a very old mortality table. And back then, everybody, you know, died at 62. You didn't have to worry about it. Well, we didn't change the model, and so we have all these people living longer. And I mean, really living. Ken, I mean, the Guinness Book of World Records, the gal died at 122 in, in, I think it was France or Canada. I can't remember which one it was. And now, one of the fixes, one of the possible fixes to the Social Security system, now that they tell us that we need to get fixed, and I just remember 10 years ago, they said, we'll have plenty of money. Don't worry about it. Sure. Now we have to fix it, and now everybody, at least you and I may not have to worry about this, but everybody beneath us is going to have to retire. Now they're pushing this thing out to 68, maybe age 70. When you can first take constructive receipt, now I think at 62, you could take your first minimum shot with some people. I think my age is at 66. 
Yeah, and, I think we're getting close to 67 Yeah, here, you so. and I are. Mm -hmm. But, but, but yeah. think they're talking about pushing this thing to 70 as the front end for the Generation Y and Xers beneath us. And with the population not being as great behind us as we are who are retiring, I mean, they don't call us the baby boom generation for nothing. Well, that's exactly right. And the, and the fact is, you know, it, the people that run these numbers are called actuaries, and the actuarial calculations uh, greatly improve if you even just push the benefits out a year or two. So. I, I, in my mind, it's almost a foregone conclusion that they're going to continue to push these out. Yeah, I think gonna, they're going to happen. Because nobody wants to make more contributions, I can tell you that. And they're going to keep raising the Social Security, I think, what is it, up to like the 103, I think, or something like that now? Well, let, let's go back to your original point just a minute ago. And, you know, why did they put this in place in the first place? Well, there's people in need, you know, mm -hmm. it, good intentions. I mean, we all want to take care of our loved ones and our, our, the people that have worked hard in our nation. I mean, that, those are all laudable goals. The fact of the matter is, at first, it wasn't a big imposition. Unfortunately, it's a program with good intentions that's gotten way out of control, which unfortunately frequently happens with government programs. Well, I thought they were supposed to, you know, as, as, as liberal as Tip O'Neill was, right? Yeah. He was telling everybody, get your hands off the Social Security funds. Right. And then that was a Democrat saying that, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. And we didn't listen to him, and we should have. Yeah. We should have listened to him. And now we're, we're going to have to keep deferring and pushing out the, the, the timeline. Yeah, the benefits, the amount of benefits people get, when they get them, how much the taxes are, all of those things are going to have to be adjusted. And there's no quick fix. This is a serious problem that needs to be addressed. And it's a political hot potato, and it's very, very difficult for our, our politicians to deal with. They just don't want to touch it. Well, I'm looking at the Social Security base wage here, Ken. It looks like it's going... This year, it's like 106.8. Right. For the base, eight, I'm, I'm looking at numbers that just blow my mind away. And so we're looking at paying 7.65% for Social Security and for Medicaid, right? Or for Medicaid. OAS, DI. Yeah. OS, what does that stand for again? Oh, I forgot. Gosh, old, I can't wait, no, it used to have. Old have age. Yeah, something. old age something. I can't remember. <laughs> and disability so, income. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Can you imagine being the first person? I, I This was on the internet some years ago. Some gal was the first person, I mean, right after they, they, right after they initiated the Social Security system, they started paying benefits to somebody. That's right? right. I mean, she was not even, her husband had died. Yeah. She had never contributed to it. Only Her husband contributed for like a year. And that demonstrates perfectly this is not money set aside in some sort of trust fund for you. This is a transfer of wealth from one group of people to the other. Mm -hmm. No wonder... No wonder we're telling all the world citizens, come to us and join our citizenry. We need you. I well, mean, yeah, you I know, mean, th th that's an interesting point. It, you know, if these people coming into our country could actually contribute, you know, if, if we can mm -hmm. make them productive citizens that are paying taxes and are, are assimilating to our society, and that's a whole different, you know, uh, political discussion. Yeah, and I'm not even talking about, you know, uh, you know, illegal immigration. I'm just talking about immigration, period. Sure. You know, we are not having as many children as our forefathers and our foremothers did. So we're, we're, now the time is, is we have to come to a place where to make it solvent, we need to have more people contributing. We're going to have to push the timelines out further. Right. And on top of all this, and we're going to get into this tomorrow. It's a painful thing we're going to have to talk about. We did allude to it in the first half of this show about Social Security taxes. I mean, your benefits being taxed. And we didn't even talk about earning a little bit of side money. Maybe you're guarding the gate at Walmart, you know, or whatever, you know ordinary income i mean your your actual wages can do this if you're taking social security but now we have other areas we got to kind of watch because our social security is getting taxed all across the board i don't know about you steve but i'm i'm envisioning that our listeners are thinking oh my gosh this income that i'm going to depend on these guys are telling me this is going to change and i think it is a foregone conclusion mm -hmm. how much and how bad i don't know so then they say well gosh how do i make that up mm -hmm. well you may have to go back to work or you have to try to figure out with your investments Mm -hmm. to, to squeeze out the best return. And I think that's one of the solutions that a good professional advisor can offer is how to reduce the taxation so that we do get more out of the things that are coming in. And by the way, you just brought up the biggest point. We're looking at the net spendable income. We're not only looking at the investment, we're looking at its taxability. You know, what, what's it, what rate is it taxed at? Can I delay it? Can I defer it? Is it exempt? Is it free? I just need to know all the possible tax ramifications of what I'm into. And people are now concerned about this. Again, because some of this affects Social Security. Ken, you brought up this thing about Medicare, uh, Medicare Part B. It blew my mind. 
Yeah. And and get ready. And ladies and gentlemen, if you this whole the whole show can be distilled down to this next <laughs> two minutes. I mean, you know, think about this Medicare B. And we have solutions for this. We'll talk about it tomorrow. But let's set it up for today. Okay. Medicare Medicare B. All right. Well, I was kind of shocked when I first discovered this. And it was actually one of my clients that sent me an email. And it's and to be frank with you, it surprised me. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is uh, adjusted gross income, this, this line item number 37 on your 1040 tax return. This is a tax concept for determining taxability deductions, et cetera. But you know what now? On your premiums for your Medicare Part B benefits, if you make a certain amount of money as an individual or married couple, you now pay a higher premium for your Medicare than if you don't make that amount of income. Now, it's a fairly high level right now. I think it's 85000 for single and 170 for married mm -hmm. uh, filing jointly. But the fact of the matter is this, is this is a tax concept creeping into the amount of premiums that we're paying for Medicare. They're dinging the senior citizens once again. I, it's, it's, it's hard for me to understand this. And there are alternatives to fight this, right? I mean, there from are. an investment point of view sure. and positioning. And remember, of course, that's one of the things that Ken is, is not only an expert on the tax side of this issue as a CPA, but he really knows the products and how to bring and deliver to our clients and especially our senior citizens net more, net spendable after tax. Keep it in your own pocket. Money. That's that's our goal. And, and I can tell you, I, I, there's no other way that I have more joy than to sit down and figure out how to rework a portfolio or, or look at stuff like this to change the tax impact. And, you know, if I can put an extra 200, 300, 500, 1000 dollars sometimes mm -hmm. into a person's pocket that's in their mid 70s, they're struggling to make their payments, costs keep going up and they're on a fixed income. It's a real joy and a delight for me to show those older people how to reduce their taxation and have a better, mm -hmm. more comfortable life. Well, I always like taking it to the man. What can I say? I just, we're always looking for ways. And, and I cannot tell you how many, how many 1040s we've looked at over our careers of both of us. We almost have 30 sure. years apiece. Sure. And we're looking at numbers where we could have defeated taxes a lot better if we would have done certain products. We would have arranged our, our, our thinking a little bit more and did what you should be doing now. Preemptive acts so that you can mitigate all these issues. And go ahead. Well, we got to go, Ken. I'm sorry. All I right. want to thank our, our sponsor, Brokers Alliance. We'll catch us tomorrow. Okay. And America, where anyone can go on a quest for financial freedom. <laughs>